YouTuber Trisha Paytas achieved fame on the internet for their unfiltered rants and daily unedited videos that felt like a fascinating character study. The character was Miss Piggy having a mental breakdown, but that's still fabulous in its own right. Less fabulous are Trisha's controversies surrounding race, cultural appropriation, and compulsive lying. Not that any of that stopped her from landing a loving partner who she recently married and is expecting a child with. Meanwhile, all of my boyfriends keep turning out to be figments of my imagination that want me to start a fight club. They lose me after the first rule. I can't just not talk about something. Online, Trisha has been building up to this wedding day for months, so naturally she had to commemorate the event by uploading her cinematic 30-minute wedding video. With the polished look of a modern romance movie and the nightmarish sound of cheap wireless microphones, get ready to believe in love again with Trisha's anxiety-provoking wedding theme, the drunken ramblings of her family and friends, and as many hard-to-sit-through songs as a playlist of Trisha's original music. It's you and me until death do us part in a holy matrimony installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web. And we break it down like the maid of honor if her best friend is a bridezilla. And look at each individual clip and decide if that is a vow worth keeping or if it's one of the 50% of people who get divorced. I'm not saying Trisha and her a new husband Moses are destined for divorce, how do I know? A lot of broken people stay together. And regardless, we're really just here to look at the content of her wedding video. But before we do that, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more clip breakdowns just like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon. Next week, I'm releasing the mug can plush, so stay tuned for that at the end of this week. It will be 29 bucks. It's so cute. Oh. So the wedding video starts with, as we said, some not bad looking drone footage. But here's the thing. Every wedding videographer has a drone now because you can buy a 4K drone off of Amazon. I think it's a great affordable way to get these aerial shots of your location or your outdoor party. And I think, you know, I, I applaud the mm, use of resources, I guess. But at this point, I'm tired of now the drone footage. Like we, I recognize drone footage. I'm no longer impressed. It's not the fucking opening credits of The Shining. I think you would set yourself apart as a videographer if you brought like a jib, which is one of those big arms that the camera lowers and raises on. That way you can get these video portraits swooping in close to the bride and panning across the bridal party. You can't do that with a drone because you'll cut the faces off. Anyway, they also capture some nice glamour shots of the bridal party getting ready, Trisha getting her makeup done. They have some close-ups of the ring and the jewelry. They show these bedazzled dance shoes or like chunky dunky basketball shoes. I was like, those are just for decoration, right, Trisha? Those are just for decoration, right? But no, we all know Trisha loves a chunky shoe when she's doing her choreography videos. So yeah, now they're drawing more attention to themselves. Anyway, <laughs> the makeup looks great. See, there's no denying that this is a stunning bridal look. The gray smoky eye perfectly complements this song, which is about cremation for some reason. Trisha told the editor, for the part where me and my mom are getting glammed up, can you make it look like the beginning credits to Sons of Anarchy? We're 40 seconds in, and this already feels like the wedding video version of those bed sheets for tacky motorcycle couples. A little bit loud, a little bit crazy, a little too old to think you're cool for hanging out at a billiards bar. Speaking of terrible merchandise, I feel like Trisha is the kind of person who would buy Moses one of those t-shirts that's like, sorry, I am already taken by a freaking awesome girl. She's a bit crazy and she scares me sometimes, but she's a perfect mixture of sunshine and hurricane. She is my whole world. Flirt with me and they'll never find your body. Yes, she bought me this shirt. Over the last couple years, I've gleaned that Trisha Paytas is into like My Chemical 
romance, alternative music. She was kind of like, you know, into the emo goth punk scene phase of the early thousands, which you know, so was my, so was my weird sister. So I get it. <laughs> so that's probably why she went with like that rough and tumble opening song rather than just royalty free romance music, which is probably a little more timeless. Not that she'll ever regret going with her gut on the rest of the wedding theme and the song that she walks down the aisle to. He says, I'm stealing inspiration from this wedding decor. When I get married, I want my guests to feel like they're actually sitting inside my struggle with depression. Hey, weird coincidence. My struggle with depression was the name of the My Chemical Romance cover band that had sex with me. None of them seemed to know about transfer proof mascara, so the hair on my ass looked three times more voluminous. But enough about my bot mitzvah. This is about Trisha's chemical romance. And I see nothing wrong with this procession. I mean, the more traditional wedding traditions, like the organ music and wearing a white dress always seemed arbitrary to me to begin with. So choosing something outside of that that you actually prefer seems like the most normal thing somebody can do when they're throwing a party that they're paying for. So I applaud Trisha for going against uh, the uh, heteronormative nuclear family expectations a little bit. I mean, she's still getting married and having a baby, but she did it with a black dress. Plus Trisha has always, you know, despite her shortcomings, she is a gender fluid, she, they. We love the non-binary aspect of it. I'm not saying everything she does is blessed by me, but you know, Trisha, if you wanna get married, wearing a black gown while enforcing an all-white dress code for the guests held within the forest of the white witch, I say go for it. Everyone here just wants to see you smile, which is too bad because we're also going to hear your nervous laughter. <laughs> Friends and family. Trisha, shut up for a second. Your wedding is starting. I'm kidding. She's obviously just excited because all of the exit doors have been sealed off until the conclusion of the musical numbers. Oh yeah, there's multiples. Can you imagine if I was locked in that room? I would have to commandeer her grandma's walker and use it to smash a window. Since we're talking about marriage, I just love being able to marry whoever I want in this goddamn country. Except even though Pride Month's over, queer and transgender people are so still fighting daily against discrimination in the political landscape on all fronts of society and marriage equality is part of that. More and more states are passing protections for the LGBTQIA plus community. There are also states that are trying to repeal rights. There are bills that target transgender people. They allow people in the state to use religion as a basis to discriminate, which is like uh, the one thing you're not supposed to fucking do in this country. Come on, America you. Anyway, nearly 240 anti-LGBTQIA plus bills have been introduced in 2022 alone. That's a huge spike since it was only 670 since 2018. They limit and directly discriminate against transgender and non-binary people. Voting is really the number one way that you can show your support for the queer and transgender community, but we also need to work on a community level to improve improve education and community resources so that we can stop the anti-LGBTQIA plus hate in this country and move on towards the equality that was promised to all people who live here. I hate weddings. I don't wanna go to your shitty wedding, but if you tell me that I can't have my own shitty wedding, it's on site. We're gonna be mad. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. I scared my little foster puppy, Toast. She's so sweet. We're gonna work on getting her to come up on the table and sleep on the bed up here, but you know, it's early. It's early in our relationship. So Trisha and Moses both exchange their, you know, improvised vows with one another. The priest talks at length. Really nothing interesting going on here, except for the fact that Trisha has a really hard time not filling the silence. I don't want to be the girl that laughs the loudest. I do. can <laughs> It's Hebrew, I don't know. That was something he was <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sounds like can't. <laughs> Sorry. As in can't take anything seriously? You're right, it does sound that way. That wedding officiant is like, am I supposed to splash her with holy water when she goes off script like this? She's laughing as hard as if that one word in Hebrew was a hit of nitrous. For some reason, they got a much better microphone situation for Trisha than they do for Moses. I believe that God is love. And that's the love that I bring to this marriage. 
Sorry, sir, you'll have to mumble about God a little louder. Your mic is picking up a little electrical interference. Hey, I told everyone to put their insulin pumps into airplane mode. I think it's cute that they did not plan anything for their wedding vows. It's a nice way of keeping things real and authentic, but also creating some weird contradictions. And they always say, you don't ever find a person to fix you, but you completely fix me in every way. Who says don't ever find a person to fix you? Oh right, that guy right next to you just a few minutes ago. People fail when they enter into marriage expecting another to make them whole. Sorry, I think this terrible audio is scrambling my language center. Did that guy up there say he wants to enter my marriage hole? Fine, but ask him if for dinner he chose the chicken or the fish. I'd like to find a flavor of Red Bull that pairs well with his breath. Despite, you know, there being plenty of speculation about Trisha's intentions with any relationship she's been in, as well as with the birth of her future child, she does seem genuinely overcome with emotion when she's like, I'm just so grateful that you wanted to marry me. You know, it's like, oh, okay. Love is real, even between that all. So the newly married couple kisses, and then it's time for the party. Every wedding should just be the party part. That ceremony, mm -mm. unless it's your wedding, no one wants to sit there. Even your parents are like, this in their head. Boring, it's boring, it's boring. But as we do in wedding videos, from what I could tell from the first scene of The Sixth Sense, you interview the wedding guests and they say funny thing to the camera. What's up Trish? Thank you for inviting me, girl. The food is amazing. I mean, some snacks here, but it's pretty good. You know, I'm starving. You know, I came here for the food most importantly because I'm hungry as hell. Wow, I didn't know Trisha was such close friends with Bebop from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He said, let me put on my good nose grommet to complain about the food. This is a classy event after all. Everyone's just being like, I'm so glad you invited me. I'm so glad I got to meet Moses in person. Like everyone says that. It's like none of the people interviewed have known Moses for more than today other than Facebook time calls. Maybe interview, I don't know, whatever. No, no, they got Moses' mom and sister or friends. Like I'm supposed to know. Some on-screen names would be good with the relation to the family. Otherwise, everyone has to shout out their own credentials, which only one person thought to do. My name is Connor Massara. I produce Trisha's music and I'm in Sad Boy 2005. And um, congrats, Trisha. Oh, good job remembering that last part after listing your professional credits there, Connor. Just so you know, most people have actually just been starting with the congratulations, Trisha, and leaving out the self-promotion altogether. But anyway, is there a SoundCloud URL you wanna scream into the microphone as well? Or are you gonna save that info for whoever you managed to corner by the open bar later tonight? He was shouting into that microphone like it, it was total request live. Hey, Trisha, so glad you could play Sad Boy 2000. This is for you getting married. Woo, spread break! For some reason, Trisha wanted her first dance and her dance with the dad, father, of the bride dance, all of these traditions. It's like, God, you're really going for it. See, like, I don't think a black wedding dress is that punk and scandalous when like, you're still being like, and now we shall do the throwing of the garter. Like, what is that? What is that straight nonsense? No offense. I'm sure a lot of people watching this felt pressured or didn't have a choice and had to do this at their own weddings. But I'm just asking, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Weird. Anyway, it's not just a dance. It's also a karaoke sesh without the karaoke track. We're gonna hear those original vocals back there. I guess I've never heard Trisha singing live before. She must have learned this vocal technique from pushing the same boulder up a mountain every day for 1,000 years. This is what dreams are made of! She might not be hitting every note, but she is swinging at them very hard. It's like Sia on a low fiber diet. Again, like the My Chemical Romance and all of it, it's like very on brand for Trisha. She has done a cover of the Dreams Are Made Of from Lizzie McGuire movie. It kind of reminds me of when I was 11 and wanted to like have Pokemon on everything I owned. It was like, just cause you like something doesn't need to be the outer skin of every event and object you touch. You know, like simplicity is also something. You can just like it in your mind. But again, not my wedding. You go Trish. I don't know if this singer was her idea. Seems like it might've been a compromise to give the groom something he wanted. <laughs> That's right, they got Elon Musk to sing at their wedding. Impressed yet? Plus we adore those lovely instrumentals provided by microphone feedback. 
Next up, it's time for the speeches. I don't know if Moses had a groom's party because we don't see a best man speech. I don't know if this video was edited down to make more like make it more Trisha focused for her channel or if they really just edited out slash didn't include a lot of Moses focused things in the in the thing. It's fine either way. Like a lot of weddings, I think the groom is like, whatever you want, sweetie, but they make up for it with these speeches. Really appreciate you taking Trisha and watching over her. She's going to need, need a lot of watching over. <laughs> and you're always so calm. Uh, I know there's been a couple of hiccups here and there, but... Why do dads always have to say, like, five extra words that ruin their whole sentence? Just stop talking after the positive part, Jim Bob. Basic marketing. Also, it feels like the wedding speeches are mainly consisting of Trisha's family showering Moses with praise for minutes on end about how he's such a good person, he's a selfless angel, he's a tranquil saint, he's Trisha's new legal guardian. And then at the end, they're like, and Trisha, you look beautiful. Get home safe, everyone. Everyone. That was Trisha's dad. Let's hear from some other members of her immediate fam. I'm so nervous. Um, this is my first Man of Honor duties. It's Trisha's big day, so let me start by saying a few things about myself and how, where I'm at emotionally with all of this. Because in some movies, the maid of honor is actually the main character. Like that hilarious one with all of the bridesmaids, 27 Dresses, starring Katherine Heigl. But I digest. Trisha, you look beautiful. I don't think she naturally talks like that. She's just weepy from the, the alcohol, maybe. I'm also not accusing her of drinking. She might just be weepy from chemical imbalance. <laughs> I'm also just kidding. She might just be emotional because her sister's getting married. We know, we're just having fun. We're just having fun, little puppy. But aside from his accomplishments, he's been patient. <laughs> really patient. <laughs> well, you're wearing that patience pretty thin right about now, sis. My grilled portobello is getting cold and you're up there improvising stand-up about how difficult your family is to be around. We already knew that based on the sounds of your voices. So those are the only two wedding speeches we hear. Again, I'm not sure I understand the pacing of this video. Like we got three random people talking to the camera, two random wedding speeches. It just seems like they're just like, mm. did they not get a lot of stuff? Doesn't seem like they did a good job of capturing the full guest list getting faces on the screen. Like a lot of times these wedding videos will have B-roll of everybody dancing so you can get people looking in the camera and you can do like a montage, but this is a little bit more corporate feeling. That is until they melt my heart with the father-daughter dance. So. <laughs> God damn it, Trisha. Does every member of your family have to lip sync for their life at this thing? She said, and now my grandpa Joe performing Into You by Ariana Grande. So if you could all move your tables cause they're gonna be wheeling in his hospital bed. Maybe with whatever Trisha's dad is doing is like the classic choreography from Sound of Music, but it's giving Christopher Walken at a memory care facility. <laughs> Oh no, not wafting your gases out of the air while you walk over to her. At least they got the actual karaoke version of this track. That I appreciate. <laughs> Believe it or not, this came together in only zero rehearsals. All jokes aside, great work to the both of you. I think you really did justice to the original musical. I'm totally reminded of World War II right now. Moses dances with his mom and they don't try to sing. <laughs> weirdly enough. And then it finishes off with some more glamour portraits of Trisha in her wedding look. Okay, Moses, or should I say Selena Gomez for Pantene Pro-V? Trisha saw how Moses' hair was stealing the spotlight, so she had to cut it off with a sword to destroy its power. I just had to do this same exact thing when one of my skin tags became sentient. Are you my little skin tag toast? She is. And that's all the Cupid's arrow had to shoot us in the head with for today's video. Do you feel happy for Trisha? Are you looking forward to her growing family? What are your thoughts on her in general? 
let's talk about it. To also give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more wedding video breakdowns. Pretty much every influencer does these. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two whole new ones every week. So turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon and you'll always be the first to know when I'm coming down the aisle in a black dress. When I was a young boy. I also have merch and a Patreon where you can access bonus episodes, exclusive watch parties. Don't forget that this uh, plushie is going on pre-sale starting at the end of this week. So stay tuned if you want to get a mug can plushie of your own. They sing, they talk, they do all sorts of tricks if you huff enough ahead of time. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for finally marrying me after months of begging. You guys are all the greatest. I will see you next time.